we now know enough of the SQL language to start discussing how it gets executed. The answer is it gets executed in lots of different ways. But let's develop one simple way, and then we can talk about alternatives. Before we can finish our implementation, we'll need to learn a few useful Python features. The first is called the named tuple function. It's in the collections module, and it returns a new subclass of tuple. So you have to import named tuple from collections. Then you call it in order to make a new class. So I've capitalized city here because it's just a name, but it's a name for a class now, a class that's returned by calling named tuple with the class name and also the names of the different attributes that you want each instance of this class to have. So I'd like each city to have a latitude, a longitude, and a name. Then I can create instances of this class just by calling it, nothing new there, but I now call it with exactly three values, and then I have instance attributes for each of these elements with these names. So if I then ask for city.latitude for city in cities, I'll get the latitudes that I specified. So the interesting new piece here is that we never had to write an init method. All we did was call named tuple. It built us a class with the right init and everything so that this just works. A feature of a named tuple class is that you can access all of the attribute names in another attribute called underscore fields. So if I print out one of these cities, I'll see that it's a city with latitude 38, longitude 122, and name Berkeley. If I wanted to get just those column names for this row, then I could use this underscore fields bit. And the third feature I'll tell you about has to do with the eval function in Python. You can pass in an expression and it will be evaluated. You can also pass in both an expression and an environment dictionary. That dictionary contains name value bindings, and then those are used as names when you evaluate the expression. So if I try to evaluate the expression latitude plus three, in this environment, latitude means nothing yet, and so I'll get a name error. But if I eval latitude plus three in an environment where latitude is bound to 38, I'll get 38 plus three is 41. We'll use all of these features when we go to implement a SQL interpreter. So before I actually implement the whole interpreter, I'm going to show you the Python equivalent of a SQL select statement so that we can understand how you can relate what's going on in a SQL statement with what might go on in Python. One way to implement select is to use a series of sequence operations. So let's say I have the following select statement that gets the name and the latitude distance in nautical miles from Berkeley of the cities where the name isn't Berkeley. So Miami, San Diego, Cambridge, Minneapolis, and the North Pole is very far north. How would we do this in Python? Well, first we need a way to represent one of the rows from the output that's projected using this select statement. So we're assuming that from the last slide, we already have a list of cities, which are city rows. But now we need distance rows, which have a name and a distance, the column names here. Next, we need a function that will compute an output row from an input row. We'll call this columns. It takes in a city, breaks it up into its latitude, longitude, and name, and returns a distance, which has a name, and computes the distance. We'll need a condition function which again takes a city and returns whether or not the name is Berkeley. Finally, we say for every row, 
in the result of mapping the columns function over the filtered version of cities, filtering by the condition, will print out that row. And the result will be that it prints out there's a Miami distance 720 row and uh, San Diego, Cambridge, Minneapolis, North Pole. They'll all be in there too. So what's going on? Well, I've tried to color code the relationship between what's in the select statement and what's down here in the Python that actually carries this out. We get the names from the column description to define the class that's going to represent a row. We have expressions from the column description actually computing the values for each row. And then we have the core part, which says we're going to use filter and map in order to take an input table and project it into an output table.